We are the Feed My Lambs family. We are a family. Our hearts are bound together in love. We are a family. Oh, oh, oh. Heart to heart, face to face. We are a family. We join us. We who live on earth to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Verse 7, And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory. For the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. Today our topic is Adventist education. Why Adventist education? What's in Adventist education? Our discourse today is anchored on Adventist education. Why Adventist education? What's in Adventist education? Is there any spiritual, social, or even any physical benefit from Adventist education? Why are people scrambling for Adventist education these days? Dear church, before we engage into our spiritual gears, let us let us drink from the well of the wisest man ever lived, King Solomon. Stephanie shall read Proverbs 22, verse 6 for us. Chain up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. One Greek philosopher once said in I quote, educating the mind without educating the heart is an education at all. Ellen G. White in Councils for the Church, page 198, asserts that knowledge is power, but intellectual ability without goodness of heart is the power for evil. God has given us our intellectual and moral power, but to a great extent, every person is the architect of his or her own character. Every day the structure is going up. The word of God warns us to take heed on how we build our buildings so it will be founded on the eternal rock, Jesus Christ. 
The time shall come when our work will stand revealed, just as it is. Therefore, we need the wholesome Adventist education, for when the time comes, will be useful and activated for this world and the world to come. The aim of true Adventist education is to restore human beings into the image of God as revealed by the life of Jesus Christ. It imparts far more than academic knowledge. It fosters a balanced development of the whole person, spiritually, physically, intellectually, socially, and emotionally. It is a process that spans a lifetime. Working together, homes, schools, and churches should cooperate with divine agencies to prepare learners to be good citizens in this world and for eternity. It blends biblical truth and academic achievement to honor God and bless others. This is the importance of Adventist education. It won't leave you the same. John chapter 3, verse 1 to 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Nothing else but the truth shall set you free. To me, Adventist education is like a balanced diet whose delicacy cannot, is difficult to resist. Its main thrust is on the conversion of students to believe Jesus is their own personal savior, to embrace a life of service to others, and to become a whole person who is spiritually, physically, and socially stable. As for me, Adventist education allows humanity to recognize God as the ultimate source of existence, truth, and power. It is the means of returning human beings to their original relationship with God. Adventist education is like a double-edged sword. It has the ability to pierce and penetrate into all the corners of antisocial behavior perfecting and reshaping lost humanity into spiritual acknowledgement and understanding. It brings social stability, coherence, and, and destroys individualism at all levels. It is tantamount to a spiritual prescription. Once affected by it, you will never be the same again. Let me come closer home now. Daniel was a product of Adventist education. He rose to become a leader in a foreign land, Babylon. Have a look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They changed the spiritual status and profiles of Babylon. They refused to worship foreign gods. Why? They attested the sweetness of Adventist education. They refused to be bought or sold. Thus, the effect of Adventist education. It has great influence. Nebuchadnezzar declared that the God of the products of Adventist be worshipped. You can change the whole of Northwood Adventist Primary School. The value of Adventist education is embedded with its ability to train, nurture, and direct a child's Huluism. It cultures its products to be acceptable members of society in this world and the world to come. Adventist education accords an individual code status and prescribing the correct balanced diet, mentally, spiritually, and physically. Adventist education today is being sought after like hot cakes on a busy market. In this permissive world, the world that has virtually allowed everything to be carefree. Adventist education is the only prescription that has managed to stabilize Hunu Evanu. Why? Because it teaches spiritual values and moral ethics that direct and restore humanity to its original state. My friend, do you not want to be part and parcel of Adventist education? Stay blessed. Today we are going to talk about the Tower of Babel. We will learn how so many different languages came into being. Our story is from Genesis chapter 11. Many years after the flood, Noah and his family had more children and they settled in the land of Babylon. They decided to build a tower so high that it would reach the sky. The hearts of the people were proud and they thought that they could reach the, the same level as God. God was very angry. He decided to put a stop to their construction. God made sure that all the people there speak a different language. 
so that they could not understand each other. Soon, everyone who spoke the same language left the city together. So this is why the tower is called Babel. So what do we learn from the story? Just like Satan, the people of Babel wanted to be like God. Their pride led down to their downfall. We must humble ourselves before the Lord. Goodbye and see you next time. Hi there, how are you? I'm happy dear, how are you? Fine, fine. I had a bad day at school today. My friend Tamika who lost her mother last week is back at school and she was just crying. How sad. I cannot imagine life without my mother. How is she handling her situation? She is really depressed and sad. I wish I could do something to help. It's hard to comfort someone if you have not passed through a similar situation. And you really have to be careful with what you say because you might just end up hurting them. Yes, I agree with you. The only thing I did when she started crying was just to hug her tight. That was very sweet of you, Kaku. That's what friends do for one another. I am her best friend, Chacha. We have been together since first grade. Wow, that's quite a while. But you know what? There is someone who is a very best friend, someone who hears her when she cries, and someone who knows what she goes through. Are you sure? And who could that be so that I introduce her to my Tamika? I am sure she would love to meet such a person. That someone has already experienced everything Tamika is experiencing. He has suffered loss before and he can give Tamika power to get over her loss. That person is Jesus. Jesus? The same Jesus of Nazareth? Yes, Jesus can comfort Tamika. She should just invite him in her life and she will find peace that passes all understanding. You know, Kaku, you know, Kaku, Jesus is a friend to anyone who calls upon him. That's interesting. So I should tell Tamika about Jesus, right? Yes, yes. And tell her that Jesus is a best friend who will always be there all the time. Thanks for chatting with me, Chacha. I now have a solution for my Tamika. Bye. Bye-bye. A lot happens under the sun, south of the equator. And here's one story, under the sun, south of the equator. A father and son were walking in the bush. And you know, there's vegetation all over, flowers all over. And the son said, Daddy, these bees, where are they going? He says, no, you know what? They are collecting nectar, going to the hive. And the father said, but anyway, stop worrying about it because there is yet another way of getting to a, to a hive. Before long, there was a bird. The son said, pap. What is this bird doing? Says it's telling us that there is honey somewhere. Come here! There is honey here! Come here! It's called a honey bird. A honey what, baby? A honey bird. And so it was getting dark. The boy said, "Let's go! Let's go!" He said, no, 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 no. We are late. We need to go home now. The boy was disappointed, disoriented, unhappy. But anyway, they went home. The next day, the boy was herding cattle alone, and the bird fortunately came. <laughs> There's honey here. <laughs> so he followed the bird from one tree to another, from that tree to that one, until he got to a place where the bees were swarmed and he could tell there was good honey there. As he was trained, he took off the bee, beehive, took the honey, took it, started eating. He was eating so much like that, he forgot that there was somebody at home who would want to have the honey. So when he finished, went to the river, drank a lot of water, his tummy was full. As he got home, the mother said, John, 
Here is your food. Mommy, I'm full. Mommy, I'm full. What did you eat? Nothing, mama, nothing. Just some grape, uh, some berries in the bush, some grapes and some stuff, blackberries and stuff. Oh, okay, no problem. The next day, the boy went out. And fortunately, he met the same sound. He heard the same sound. Hey, there's honey here. So he followed the bird, and he followed the bird, and he followed the bird, and he followed the bird. This time the bird was taking him so far up the cliff, up there, up to a sloppy ledge. And finally, he could see the whole land down there, and was wondering where the hive was. Before he could think twice about what was happening, a big snake slithered past. Oh, what? He took to his heels, sped at a rampaging spree. He ran and ran and ran, never stopped. Adrenaline was at its work. And so when he got home, he went to the father. Daddy, you are bad. That, that bird of yours, you are bad. That bird is bad. What are you saying? It took me up the mountain. It took me far. You know, I'm tired. I'm hungry. And that bird of yours took me to a sneak. So the boy, the father said, my son, that bird is a very good bird. But did you perchance chance get to a hive any other day led by this bird? Yes, uh, just the day before yesterday, it, it happened. Oh, okay. Now I'll tell you what happened. It took you to the hive. But unfortunately, you never left anything for it, did you? Why would I do that for a stupid bird? Okay. Now, this bird here leads you to where a snake is. You are lucky it was a snake. It would have led you to a, to a, to a lion or something even worse. Because it did not do good the other day. So, learn this from me, my son. Whenever you see this bird and you follow it to a hive, make sure you leave something for it. It cannot get honey from the comb. It can't get it from the hive. So, you put aside some for it. By sharing with it, it will lead you to another hive in that, in that fashion, etc., etc. So, learn a lesson, my son. Whenever you see that bird, it is saying, come, let's share what I have. This is the story for today. Thank you so much for listening. But before you go, just a minute. Whatever you do, learn from this story. Do good. Wherever you go, do good. However you do anything, do it well. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, alludes to this. Do unto others as you would they do to you. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you so much. For the lesson we have heard, may we learn to be good and to do good unto others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Joki. Today I'm going to give you nine verses. Ephesians 6 verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Psalm 23 verse 1 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so does 20 verse 89 Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. And Philippians 4 verse 4 Rejoice in the Lord, I say rejoice. James 5 verse 16 Pray Pray for each other. Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. John 11 verse 35. Jesus wept. Romans 12 13. Share with God's people who are in me. Joshua 1 9. Be strong and brave. I, that God, will be with you everywhere you go. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God 
for giving me this opportunity to stand in front of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Today, we want to look at a common story among Christians. In John 14, verse 1 to 3, the Bible tells us not to be troubled by so many things. These words were said by Jesus himself. He knew that to face so many challenges that would trouble us. Today, if we look at school children, they have their own worries which trouble them. Some are bullied at school. Some are going through emotional abuse. They are given nicknames. Some because of their body structures, which is beyond their control. Some are going through physical abuse, which keeps on haunting them. Maybe it is disease, depression, abuse, pornography, rejection, broken relationships, temptations, fear, past failure, anger or discouragement, even health problems, financial problems, marital problems, employment problems, children problems. Troubles we face can be called by different names. But today, I've got a good message for us. Jesus is coming again. John's family moved into a new neighborhood. When John went out to play with the other boys, John got surprised. He was the only boy without a bicycle. John went back home looking sad. And John's father said, John, why are you sad? And John said, I can't play with the other boys because I'm the only boy without a bicycle. John's father said, John, I promise you, if you pass this time, I'll buy you a new bicycle. And John smiled. Have you ever been promised something by someone? Jesus gave us a promise. The Bible says in Revelation 22, verse 12, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. Jesus promised to come for his own. Let's be ready to meet him when he comes. This world is full of disappointments, heartaches, suffering, and sorrow. We can't live here forever. Jesus is coming to take us home. The disciples saw him go, and the angels assured them that they will see him come. His coming is not going to be a secret. Every eye shall see him. His coming is going to be a worldwide event which cannot be missed. The dead in Christ shall witness it. The cry with the command shall wake the dead. The trumpet sound shall get through the ears. Even of the deaf that everyone will know that he has come. Jesus promised so and surely do it and let's be ready for it. But before Jesus comes, there will be signs of his coming. What shall happen to this world? The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 6 and 7, And there shall be wars and rumors of wars. Say that you are not troubled, for all these things might come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. What shall happen to the religious world? The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 4, 5, and 11. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For men will come in my name, saying I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And then many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. A warning was given to us. Men pretending to be Christ. Many false prophets shall rise. As we can see, most of these things have happened. We are left with preaching the gospel to the whole world. After preaching the gospel to the whole world, and then the end will come. The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 14, For this gospel of the kingdom, will be preached in all the world, as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. After preaching the gospel, the end will come. The Bible also says, As the days of Noah, so shall it be, the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Let's be ready and prepare for the soon coming King. It will be a happy day for those who will be saved. On this day, 
they will bid farewell to planet Earth. Imagine on this day, when you shall go to the graves, after being raised and asked, O oh grave, where is thy victory? On this day, you shall challenge death. O oh death, where is thy sting? On this day, all bullying shall cease. All troubles shall vanish away. All problems will become history. Even homework and study times will be a thing of the past. What a joy it will be for those who will be saved. Amen. Jehovah, <laughs>